This video is going to take a look at the 3D chamfer option that's available within the contour toolpath. Now the 3D chamfer toolpath is very similar to the 2D chamfer toolpath. The main difference is that the geometry driving the toolpath changes directions in all three axes instead of just X and Y. So as an example, looking at the model that's on our screen, we have a chamfer that follows the edges all the way around the part. So now the chamfer toolpath not only has to worry about just the outer profile, but also the change in z-depth as it comes down the slope. I'm going to access my solids manager and look at the parameters for the chamfer. And the parameters show me that it's a 32 thousandths chamfer. Now with this toolpath, as in the 2D toolpath, I need to select the intersection of the side faces and the top faces. So I'll go over into my Solids Manager. I right clicked on the chamfer and I suppressed that operation. Now I have sharp corners. And by going into Create, Curve, and I did it one edge at a time, I can come along and I can create wireframe along the edges of this solid model. Now I have to be careful, it's not just this edge right here, I have to zoom in and I would need to be able to create an edge right along this little radius right here and so on and work my way around. And the results would be what I have on level 5. I'll turn off my solid and just turn on level 5. I have it labeled as 3D chamfer wire and this is what I have. So this is what will be driving my toolpath. So I go into my toolpath manager. I can right click, mill toolpath, contour, and I'm going to go ahead and chain this toolpath. Click OK. I'm using a quarter of an inch chamfer tool, which I selected from my library. I'll go into my contour parameters. Now my depth is going to be incremental, which has already toggled itself to that. Zero distance from the driving geometry. My contour type, drop down the menu, and I'll select 3D chamfer. Once this is selected, my configuration for the chamfer toolpath becomes active, and I could set the size of my chamfer. So I'm going to make this 32 thousandths. My tip offset, same thing as I did in my 2D. I'm going to make this say 25 thousandths here. And I'll click OK. I'll accept this and it's created my toolpath. I'll look at it in back plot and you'll see that it comes down and it follows my geometry all the way around and then back up to the beginning again. Now the thing that you have to kind of remember is that this is going to be the best approximation that MasterCam can come up with because right along this area here the tool is perpendicular to the top C plane not to the faces of the model. The toolpath that's created maintains the relationship between the tip of the tool and the wireframe that's driving it, not the face of the chamfer. So keep in mind that the steeper the slope, the more there will be a discrepancy between the design model and the cut model. If the part that you're working on requires a much more accurate representation of the chamfer rather than just breaking edges, then another type of toolpath is what's going to be required. A toolpath that's actually driven by the features of the surface or the face of that solid chamfer and not just the 3D wireframe. I'll show you a quick example of that type of toolpath. In this example, I'm using a surface finish flow line toolpath and what's driving the toolpath is the actual face or surface of this chamfer. So therefore, the toolpath is much more accurately defined by a surface and not just a single line traveling along an edge. And when this toolpath gets back plotted, you can see that we're using a ball end mill 
and it's not doing a single contour like we did with the chamfer end mill. We'll zoom in here, and you can actually see the toolpath and how the ball end mill is kind of scrubbing up and down along the surface of that chamfer. So that's a whole different type of toolpath. But as far as with a standard 3D chamfer toolpath, it'll follow a three-dimensional contour and give you the best approximation that it can for cutting the chamfer along your part.